Have you ever played a video game that scared the living daylights out of you and it gave you nightmares for weeks on end? Sure you have. Horror video games have gotten so immersive over the years that it can awaken fears in your brain and tensions that you never knew you had. But are horror games the only kind of games that can give you this kind of fear? Are there games out there that have awoken real fear or illnesses or even invoked death? In this segment, I will give you a list of games that have solidified themselves on the creepy list of what the hell. These games are surrounded in urban legend and myth and are said to have created horrible effects or experiences within the people who have played them. So strap in and get comfortable cause you're in for a spooky ride. Number 5. Hero Brine. This is probably one of the most popular tales of haunted video games. Stories goes as so. In the very popular game of Minecraft made by company Mojang, players would play this open world building sim and come across some real spooky shit. Many player accounts talk about while playing in single player survival worlds, they will come across massive structures that weren't in the game code and should have never been there to begin with. These structures look like they were built by another player, but how could that be if it was a single player survival world? More stories started to surface of people seeing a mysterious figure that looked a lot like the default skin and mascot from Minecraft named Steve. Only problem is the eyes of Steve which are famously black were whited out and glowing. Now even spookier than this, the game creator, a guy by the name of Notch, had a brother who played under the username of Herobrine. Notch's brother had died tragically many years ago, but legend has it that his spirit haunts the game, which gave a name to this white-eyed figure that people were seeing. Even more creepier is Mojang had done lots of updates to the game leading to the present day, but one of their updates was called the removal of Herobrine. So is this figure real? And if it is, was it a bug or a glitch? Or maybe Notch put in Herobrine in to honor his brother? Or is it what everyone thinks, a ghostly presence that haunts the game? Whatever it is, it's scary as hell. But let's move on to the next game. Number 4, Polybius. Polybius was a game that was played on arcade machines in 1981, mostly in Portland, Oregon. Supposedly it was made by a German company with a name that I can't even pronounce. The game is said to have been so popular in arcades that people would line up out the door to play it and even got into fist fights with each other if they felt someone was trying to line cut. The legend goes that many people who played this game started suffering from strange effects such as amnesia, insomnia, hallucinations, and night terrors. This game was also accused of being responsible for a string of suicides from users who frequently played. Holy crap! Of course, a lot of this information can't be proved, and even if you wiki this game, they will say it never existed. But there might be a reason for this. Stories say that every night before the arcade would close, men in dark suits would show up like clockwork and plug in weird contraptions gathering various data from the game machines. Were these strange men sent by the government? And was this game some sort of weird experiment on the human psyche? Most people think so, and whether this story is real or not is not known, but if the government was really trying to cover up this terrible experiment, isn't that exactly what they would want you to think? <laughs> so let's move on to number 3. Number 3. Elder Scrolls Morrowind Haunted Mod Elder Scrolls has reached global fame, with Skyrim topping most RPG best of all time lists. But before the Skyrim craze, there was another popular game made by Bethesda by the name of Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. Like most Bethesda games, the title was heavily supported for mods, but one particular mod took the cake for one of the creepiest mods ever made. The mod was named JVK11660.esp. Most players disregarded this mod as a virus, but for the unlucky few that actually got this mod to work, they were in for a spooky surprise. When you got the mod to load up, you were thrust into the game world and would immediately realize that every NPC was dead. But not only that, you would also notice that your health was rapidly deteriorating if you stood still. 
Upon moving your character though, a mysterious figure named the Assassin would take pursuit of you. This figure looked like a half human, half spider. Even spookier than that, if you made it to nighttime, you would find all the NPCs that were originally dead had revived. But instead of moving about doing their daily routines, they were standing in place, staring at the sky. And if you attempted to speak to them, they would only reply, watch the sky. Now, for the really brave ones who kept exploring the mod, they would stumble upon a dungeon. The dungeon was named simply the Hall of Portraits. You would go into a long hall with portraits on the wall, and you would quickly realize that the mod had pulled pics from your game folders, and that's what inhabited each frame. When you made it to the end of the hall, you would come up to a locked door. Legend has it, no one has ever got that locked door to open, and some people even became obsessed to the point of insanity. So what was behind that door, and who created this spooky mod? No one knows, but it definitely deserves to be on this list. So let's move on to number two. Number two, the mysterious copy of Majora's Mask. This tale is an unusually creepy one. If you don't know what Majora's Mask is, it's a Legend of Zelda game that featured on the Nintendo 64. Now, a user on the web community of 4chan came forward with one of the spookiest stories you'll ever hear. He came across a copy of Majora's Mask, only this copy was blank and whoever owned the game before had written Majora's Mask on it with the marker. When he popped in the game, there was a save file on it by the name of Ben. The user did not use the save file and instead made a new game. The game immediately started flipping out and began to glitch, even playing songs and text backwards in some parts to his playthrough. But even more chilling, every NPC in the game was calling him Ben. The user reset and deleted the save file named Ben and started a new playthrough. This did not help though, the game flipped out more. He began to hear screaming and screeches in the background which chilled him to the bone. So again he reset, but when he turned the game back on, the save file Ben had reappeared along with another save file called Drowned. He started a new game yet again, but his character would die immediately when he began his playthrough. Even more spooky than that, the game would display a message when he died saying you've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? Did a boy named Ben own this cartridge before him and maybe drowned and his soul still haunts it? No one has ever recovered the cartridge, so it could be just a myth, but maybe someone has recovered this copy of the haunted Majora's Mask and made sure that it never made it to public eyes ever again. Now on to number one. Number one. Pokemon Red and Green Lavender Town Syndrome. This story is highly debated if it's fact or fiction, but this story surrounds the pocket monster sensation of Pokemon. Back in 1996, Nintendo released Pokemon Red and Green versions for the Game Boy. The release of this game was first seen in Japan and was met with positive feedback until tragedy struck. A string of suicides gripped Japan shortly after the game's release. These suicides were committed by children, their ages ranging from 7 to 15. The story says that the suicides had children jumping from high places, hanging themselves, and self-mutilation. The sources of these suicides was being blamed on Pokemon, as all the children owned a copy of the game. But not just the game itself. It was being blamed on Lavender Town. Now, if you're not a gamer or just never played Pokemon, Lavender Town was a town that was inhabited by ghosts and had no people. Legend goes that the first version that was released featured music in Lavender Town that had a very high pitch. This high pitch could only be heard by children and it made them go crazy, crazy enough to hurt themselves and even kill themselves. Now again, this story is highly scrutinized and debated, but there's one fact about it that is super creepy and weird. Even though Nintendo severely denied any allegation that this story has any truth to it, but for some reason, they changed the original music from Lavender Town before it was shipped over to America. Why would they do that? And does this story have any truth to it? Huh, 
I guess we'll never know. But to this day, you can look up the original music of Lavender Town. But if you ever look it up, I would highly advise you to do it very far away from any children just to be safe. And that wraps up this segment. As always guys, this is the Boomer Gaming Kid signing off. God bless, stay safe, and have a great day.